Huge news breaking late Sunday night. The Major League Baseball Players Association is trying to form a minor league union. I'll tell you what you need to know about it on today's Locked on MLB Prospects. You are Locked on MLB Prospects, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on in to Locked on MLB Prospects, your home for all things minor league baseball. I'm your host, Lindsey Crosby, baseball writer for Sports Illustrated, and thank you for making this your first listen every single day. And so, yeah, this news broke about 11 p.m. Eastern on Sunday night. Most of us are already in bed, so woke up Monday morning to absolute chaos. Here's what's going on. So the Major League Baseball Players Association sent out what are called authorization cards to every single minor leaguer, so about 5,000 players. And what these cards say is you sign them to indicate that you want the MLBPA to be the union representative for you. Uh, Now, you send those cards back in, and if the PA gets 30% of the cards they sent out returned, signed, they can take those cards to the National Labor Relations Board. Um, It's a government agency. We've covered them on the show before when we're talking CBA during the lockout. But they're the ones who govern uh, union elections, uh, collective bargaining agreements, all that stuff. If you have 30% of those cards returned that say yes, then you can ask the NLRB for a union election. They will verify the signatures, verify that those are in fact valid players and all that, and then they can schedule an election. Uh, What the Players Association is attempting to do is not get an election. Instead, what they're trying to do is if you get a higher percentage, and like the the minimum is 50% plus one vote. But if you get a higher percentage, you can skip the election and you can request that management voluntarily recognize uh, that you are in fact now a union. So ask MLB to acknowledge that, yes, the minor leagues now have a union and you will collectively bargain with us. For a lot of reasons, as you can imagine, not a lot of companies do that. It typically requires an exceptionally high uh, percentage to recognize that it is a union uh, and, and for these organizations to go ahead and do it. So now the NLRB can mandate that, hey, MLB, you have to go ahead and accept them as the union. Uh, the, the, the odds are overwhelming you know, the, the, the votes are overwhelming in favor of this. Uh, and with there being public pressure on Major League Baseball to improve working conditions and do all of that, that's possible. But uh, kind of unexpected. I think what Major League Baseball is going to attempt to do is try to actually force an election. If you think about where we are right now, it's the end of August. Um, depending on the level, the minor leagues have one week left or two weeks or three weeks. And so if you attempt to force an election, uh, the minimum amount of time that it can happen from the petition submitted to the NLRB is 13 days. So if that petition was submitted, say, next Tuesday, you're looking at, at best, an election at the end of the season. And with all of the player turnover that you see in minor league baseball from year to year, uh, from season to season, there's a good chance you would then have that delayed to the spring and with all of the turnover in what they call the bargaining unit the pool of players you probably then have to go out and get new authorization cards so what the players association is attempting to do is they are trying to get an overwhelmingly high percentage of authorization cards returned so they can go to the nlrb and say it is overwhelming that these minor league players want to be represented by us you should mandate that Major League Baseball acknowledge and recognize the union. Uh, that is something that can be done. It has happened before, and that is what MLB ha- is tr- uh, the Players Association is trying to do here. Uh, I've been told that the goal is to announce a percentage and publicly call for MLB to recognize the union next Monday on Labor Day. So I imagine next Tuesday's show is probably going to touch on that quite a bit if it happens. Uh, Now, the way that this would work is it is technically part of the Major League Baseball Players Association. It's it's what's called a separate bargaining unit. 
So the Major League Baseball Players Association would have the Major League players, and they would do a collective bargaining agreement for them, and then they would have the Minor League players, and they would do a separate collective bargaining agreement for them. Uh, same model you see a lot when the AFL-CIO does, for instance, they'll do um, you know different groups, different industries. Those are all, it's under the same umbrella, under the same union, but they're different bargaining units uh, under different contracts. So something like that. Uh, it would cover all domestic affiliated minor leaguers. So 180 guys per organization uh, in the U.S. So guys in the, the Dominican Summer League at the academies are not included. But your 180 players counts AAA, AA, um, high A, and single A. Um, as well as the guys that you have at the complex. So 180 total. And the obvious takeaway from all of this, the goal, if you are recognized as a union, is wages, right? If you think about right now, the way the wages work in, uh, in single A and high A, it's $500 a week. In double A, it's $600 a week. And in AAA, it's $700 a week. Uh, now, when you add all of this up, it's about $66,000 a week in wages that Major League Baseball pays for those 180 players. And over the course of a season, with the different lengths of, of the, the season, it's about $1.5 million per organization in salaries. Not every single player makes the minimum. Uh, obviously, your minor league baseball free agents after seven seasons or veterans who are on minor league contracts make higher amounts. But... On average, it's about $1.5 million uh, is kind of the floor for paying your minor leaguers. Uh, so I would expect the very first thing to be to be worked on under this newly formed union, if it does happen, uh, would be wages. In just a minute, I want to go into a lot of the other, the secondary outcomes that you would see the union work on uh, with Major League Baseball and collectively bargain. But first, today's episode is brought to you by our friends at LinkedIn. As you gear up for fall, you need the right people on your team to help your small business fire on all cylinders. LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find the people you want to talk to faster and for free. Create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. And that's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MLB. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MLB to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. Okay, so there's been a lot of pieces that have been written on Monday kind of frantically about minor league baseball labor. And there's a couple sources I want to point you to uh, the first one, I think, is going to be Mark Normandon. So MarkNormandon.com, I'll put a link in the show notes. Uh, he has written a lot about labor and about the relationship with minor league baseball and labor and how this stuff works. So he has a good primer out there about what's going on. Subscribe to his newsletter. Uh, it is free and it has great content that you're definitely going to need. Eugene Friedman is another person that's absolutely worth following. Uh, he mostly is on Twitter. Uh, he actually works with unions professionally. He's a union lawyer, but he writes about baseball uh, labor relations. I'll put a link to him in the show notes as well. Uh, but both these guys have done a great job of breaking some of this down. There's a couple secondary outcomes that can come out of this if there a union does come from this effort. So I think the first thing is you have a hedge against minor league contraction. So in 2020, you'll remember they, they contracted the minor leagues. Major League Baseball unilaterally got rid of affiliates and decided they were contracting the minor leagues. And the, they were able to do this because they have, a, uh, they have an antitrust exemption and they can collude to do all of this stuff. So um, when you, you know, those remaining 120 affiliates signed what's called a player development contract. And that is something that mandates the relationship between the affiliate and the organization. Uh, but one of the clauses in there is that uh, you are, Major League Baseball teams are required, in the professional development license, are required to provide um, 
X number of players per season. It's um, it is thirty in A ball and it's twenty eight in Triple A and Double A, I believe. And so uh, they were required to provide them uh, through twenty thirty, as long as those organizations meet the facility requirements laid out in the agreement. And those are the upgrades we talked about earlier in the season: the condition of the field, uh, availability of locker rooms, all that kind of stuff. So um, those. PDLs do not prevent Major League Baseball from reducing the number of minor league players. Like, they can say, we want to go from 180 spots to 150 or whatever. But it does make it harder because it's explicitly laid out how many each affiliate gets in the contract. Under collective bargaining, that number, the total number of jobs per organization, is something that can be collectively bargained. So if Major League Baseball wants to get rid of an affiliate. Say they want to, instead of having um, single A and high A, they want to do just A ball. They would have to collectively bargain that with the union. And so the players can find some sort of way to to either prevent it from happening or receive some sort of compensation and some system for that. Uh, During the collective bargaining agreement negotiations for the major leagues, MLB proposed a limit of 150 and the Players Association said no. Uh, and now it's something where that would be ne- negotiated directly and the Players Association can stop the minor leagues from getting smaller. Another thing I think would be really interesting, just kind of remind folks about, is before 2020, non-drafted free agent bonuses were capped at $125,000. It wasn't a hard cap. You could go over it, but you had to use money from your draft pool that you got from your first 10 picks. Uh, now in 2020, they changed, you know, they shortened the draft to five rounds, and then they put a hard cap on of $20,000 for non-drafted free agents. You could not go over $20,000 in any circumstance for any players you signed outside of the draft in 2020. Uh, That rule was in place for 2021 as well. It stayed in place. And then in 2022, it reverted back to the old draft rules. So, um, you went back from a $20,000 limit to a $125,000 limit. And what happened was nearly $4 million in additional bonus was given to undrafted free agents. So that's something that minor league baseball players who were entering minor league baseball in 2022, um, some of them got two, three, five, ten times as much as they would have gotten in 2020 and 2021 because the Players Association thought to put that into the agreement. Well, that is now something that that minor league baseball players can negotiate for their incoming peers themselves. Um, I do want to point out that, oh, I'm sorry. Another thing we want to look at is uh, right now, college athletes have, it's been a big story for a year, over a year now, name, image, and likeness rights. They can make merchandise with their face on them. They can do whatever, you know, they can sell sell merchandise. They can endorse things, all of that. Minor league baseball players under the uniform player contract do not have the ability to monetize their name, image, and likeness. Those rights belong to their organization as long as they are um, not on the 40-man roster and not part of the MLB Players Association. And so a minor leaguer cannot go out and have, you know, and sell a shirt with his, with his face on it and, you know, his likeness on it. So that is something that I guarantee you would be collectively bargained by the Players Association on behalf of minor leaguers is you see all these cool shirts from Breaking Tea or Roto Wear and all of that stuff. We want the ability to make those for minor league players as well. Why can't a kid who just got drafted have some merch come out? Uh, you know, that's something that they're going to work on. Um, broadcast availability. There is no incentive, no financial incentive to invest in broadcasting minor league games. There is a paid service, MILB.TV. Every prospect person has it. Not a ton of other people have it. It's really kind of an industry tool. Not a ton of folks sit around to watch baseball games on their computer in the middle of the day. Uh, but we do. And I, if the Players Association is collectively bargaining with Major League Baseball for the minor leaguers, there's now a financial incentive to grow the broadcast capabilities, and split that money between MLB and the players. So that's something that I look for them to do. And then I do want to address the elephant in the room. 
it is possible that you could see a minor league strike or a lockout if they're unable to come to a CBA. Uh, that is a possibility when you have a union. We just saw that with the major league players. We saw the links that they were willing to go to to, uh, to try to get a good deal over on the players. Uh, absolutely something that could happen in this situation as well. Now, uh, I would say, I, you know, I, I'm trying to get some clarification. I think the player development license and the requirement to provide players to the affiliates, I think that may give the minor leaguers and the, the, uh, the minor league teams a little bit of power against my, Major League Baseball. But at the same time, I wouldn't be 100% shocked if Major League Baseball went and, uh, you know, sit in replacement players one day. So, so I have to acknowledge that is something that could happen, uh, is you could see a strike or a lockout of minor leaguers until a new CBA was signed. I don't know the exact time frame on if, M- if MLB chooses to recognize the union. If, if Labor Day is the announcement by the union and the recognition comes soon after by Major League Baseball, they'll probably be negotiating over the winter, and you may see something come in place before spring training next year. Uh, And if something's not in place, you may see some sort of lockout or strike until it's done. I don't know. But I have to acknowledge that is a possibility. That is a risk that you have when there is a union created. But the gains uh, definitely make up for that. And in just a minute, I want to go over some of the areas, salary kind of a little more specific, and then some of the other areas where you're going to see the Players Association bargain and some details of proposals. Okay, so um, I obviously the big thing is salary, financial compensation. The average mi- minor leaguer makes virtually nothing. Like like we mentioned, the 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 pay scales five hundred dollars in A ball, six hundred in double A, seven hundred in triple A. But here's the thing: you're only paid um, during what they call the championship season, which is in essence the regular season. You're not paid in spring training. They're not paid in extended spring. They're not paid in the postseason, and they're not paid out of season. And there was actually a lawsuit brought in 2014 that Major League settled it. Uh, Major League Baseball settled in July uh, for 185 million dollars, and it was from players alleging from minor league baseball players alleging that they had pay illegally withheld for spring training, for extended spring, for instructional league in the fall. You know, they're required to go to the Arizona Fall League or whatever, but they weren't paid for it. Um, And so Major League Baseball settled with them for $185 million. So I think the very first thing you're going to see is whatever the salary is decided, it's going to be something that's paid year-round. Players receive it in spring, an extended spring, they receive it in season, they receive it in the postseason, they receive it in instructional league, they receive it when they are completely off over the holidays. They get paid year-round as a member of the organization. In that case, you probably would pick a date. Um, you know, like January 1st is the beginning of, and then you pay them all the way through the year, something like that. Uh, now, the dollar amount is going to be a question as well. Most minor leaguers I mean, you can add that up. $500, uh, $500 a week for 22 weeks is not a lot of money. There's been a lot of work about how what would be the proper amount of money. Uh, the group More Than Baseball, the advocacy group More Than Baseball, has proposed uh, $35,000 a year is the minimum salary for minor league baseball. So the, what that would do, and he, here's the financial impact that has for an organization. So currently, remember from the first segment, it's about $1.5 million a year for a major league organization to pay the salaries for every single minor leaguer. It's 180 minor leaguers per affiliate or per, per organization divided among your four affiliates in your complex. If you pay them $35,000 a year, it's a total of $6.3 million. If you pay them $50,000 a year, it's a total of $9 million. That is not, in the grand scheme of things, a lot of money for a Major League Baseball team. And I know there are some teams that have smaller payrolls, the Oakland Athletics, total expenditure for salaries, benefits, buried and retained uh, salaries and everything is like $40 million. You have to understand they're one of the exceptions. Most organizations run a six-figure payroll. So going from paying $1.5 million to paying six point three or even nine is not impossible for some of these organizations to do. Matter of fact, 
for some of these organizations like the Dodgers, the Mets, you know, the Braves, the Yankees, that's a rounding error. That's not even significant. They're paying some players, you know, um, that entire $66,000 a week right now, current salary for minor leaguers for an entire week for your entire organization. There's some players that make that per game. And so absolutely doable. I think another thing you're going to see collectively bargained is uh, paid off-season training. Right now, most minor leaguers do not have access to the team facilities or do not live near their their team facilities. Um, and so they're not able to, to train with the team. They have to pay for their own gym memberships and all of their own stuff. The average, again, more than baseball calculated this, $287 a month in training costs. So I think that Another thing they would they would get codified would be either reimbursement for training costs, a set per day. This is your, you know, you get $300 a month or whatever the cost is for access to training facilities in the off season. Um, you would see that. You would see codified living standards. There was a big story about this year is the first year that Major League Baseball is required to provide housing. But there's still a situation where not everybody, especially the lower level affiliates, not everybody has their own private bedroom. Some guys are still sharing a room with someone else. And then some of the guys who have family members who have a wife or a wife and a child uh, maybe still have roommates and they're not given their own separate unit. So I imagine that would be something that would be collectively bargained as well. Every player has their own bedroom. And then every player who has a, you know, a, a, They've, they've signed the paperwork and they have a, a spouse or significant other and or a child. They would receive their own separate one-bedroom unit or something like that unless they chose to have a roommate. And then some of the other things you maybe don't necessarily think about is like rule changes. We've seen automated balls and strikes. We've seen shift restrictions. We've seen, we've, they proposed pushing the mound back. All of these things minor league, uh, Major League Baseball can do unilaterally. They don't have to ask the minor league players for permission they don't have to run it by them at all. They can just show up to the ballpark and say, hey, we're changing this. And that is something where you can now collectively bargain. Hey, if we're going to be testing all of this stuff for you, you know, we need better injury guarantees because we don't know if there's a, you know, a, a, a risk of heightened injury if you push the mound back. Or we need, you know, you can get compensated for being, in essence, guinea pigs and testing rules for baseball. That's something that can be collectively bargained. It can be graduated in. You're not changing rules mid-season. That's been one of the big things for me is the shift restriction changed from the first half to the second half. And so something like that, you can negotiate on a case-by-case basis. All in all, uh, just an amazing outcome, something I did not know was going to happen. We're definitely going to do more uh, about this topic. We're going to follow this story very closely. Again, our prediction is next Monday. You're going to see some sort of announcement by the Players Association saying that they have over 70% or some absurdly high number of authorization cards back, and they're asking Major League Baseball to um, to voluntarily recognize them as a union. And if Major League Baseball is smart, they'll do it. Um, they should voluntarily recognize it um, because that's the best thing to do for, um, for public relations. And given the acrimony that they've, They've seen from Congress, from uh, constituents, from everybody. But it's Major League Baseball. I don't know if that's going to happen. So stay tuned. The Lockdown will be prospects. Uh, we'll be talking all about this story as more develops. Um, but in the meantime, great week coming up this week. If you're still watching, do us a favor. Go ahead and subscribe to the show. Um, like us. Leave us a review somewhere. iTunes, um, your favorite, favorite podcast app. It really does mean a ton. Uh, and until the next show we do, This has been Locked on MLB Prospects. Uh